Hello, I'm really glad you joined us online today. When we're not sure about what in the world is going on, we can be sure that God's plan will prevail and it will be good for those who love him. In the last few years, the world has been in a tremendous amount of turmoil, which is a complete understatement. Riots erupted in many cities. It seems like justice is being perverted and may not recover in our day and time. The scales of justice are actually tipping toward evil. The evil lurking in the shadows has come out into the open. But all of Christ's followers have a tremendous amount of hope and a reason for hope amidst all the turmoil. The message of Habakkuk is extremely relevant to us today. The message of God is sobering at times, but hope is embedded within the message he brings to his people. Habakkuk was confused by several things that were going on in his day, and he asked God several questions. I think we should all have the kind of relationship with God where we are able to ask him questions. He was confused that God was delaying justice and using ruthless people to punish less sinful people. That's, in his mind, they were less sinful. That, that was his estimation. In this series, we're going to discover the hope embedded in Habakkuk's message. Here's a preview of the God is Working series. Today, God is working. Even when you can't see what God is doing, you can trust that he is working in history to accomplish his purpose, and it will be good for those who love him. Next week, perfect timing. It's easy to jump to the wrong conclusions about what God is doing in the world in history. When God is delaying, though, you can trust that he will come through at just the right time. His timing is perfect. Third week, faith without results. Chapter three is a chapter of praise that God is enough. Even when there is no fruit from our efforts, God's people know that he is enough. In, in his, this book, Habakkuk, ask God a series of questions that signify his complaint based on his confusion. He was completely confused about what was going on in the world, and you, you may be confused as well right now, and you're wondering what is up, where is God? He wonders, as all of God's people do sometimes, how long will I cry for help and not get an answer? It seems like God is not listening. We all wrestle with under, misunderstanding what God is doing at times in history and even in our own lives. You, you may be there right now. You can't understand what God is doing in your life. Habakkuk does what we should all do. He takes your questions directly to God. Habakkuk 1, 1 through 4 says, The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear, or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity, and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. 
During the pandemic, I was doing my devotions in Habakkuk. And reading Habakkuk strengthened me as the riots were happening and along with the Twitter fights. And it seemed like everything was falling apart in our country. And it was so relevant. I was very deeply encouraged in the Lord by what I was reading in Habakkuk. In verse 4, he continues, So the law is paralyzed, and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. Justice being perverted today by critical race theory, and the law is getting paralyzed. District attorneys in some cities aren't even prosecuting criminals. They're letting them go in some places without bail. The law is being paralyzed. As I read through this in the pandemic, I was strengthened in my inner person by the perspective that God gives here. <clears throat> this is what happens when you read God's word and you try to apply it to your life you get stronger. The book of Habakkuk is called the oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw. The word oracle in Hebrew literally means burden. This is how you feel when you receive a word from God sometimes. Maybe you're troubled or burdened by what is going on in the world and you take your troubles to the Lord and you work, you try to work them out before him. This is what Habakkuk did. And he set a, a tremendous example for all of us. Maybe you're burdened by a word from God because you must work through some patterns of sin that he just revealed. You, you may not have been aware of this pattern before, and now you must deal with it by working through the guilt of it and getting forgiveness and confession. But in the end, that's a good thing. The burden leads you to work through to forgiveness, confession and forgiveness and repentance. Maybe something is going on in your world or the world at large that is troubling you. And you need to get a word from him. Something is weighing you down, and you need to hear from God. This is what we should try to do. We should take our troubles to God. And when we're burdened, we need a word from God, for sure. Habakkuk had the kind of relationship with God that he felt free to ask the Lord questions about what he was experiencing, what he was going through, and we can have that kind of relationship too. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity? Why do you idly look at wrong? Habakkuk basically asked here, God, are you paying attention to what's going on in the world? Are you going to let this evil go on forever unpunished? We can be assured that God will not let it go on forever. Every person on the face of the earth will face judgment one day. But I want to point out that we can have this kind of close relationship with God as well, where we ask him the questions. We pour out our heart to him because he cares for us. When God doesn't seem to be paying attention to what is happening in the world, we need to ask him our questions. When, when he's not paying attention, doesn't seem to be paying attention to what's happening in our world, that's when we need to ask him our questions. 
This is what I do with questions for God. I ask God what he is doing in history to help me understand what in the world he's doing. And <clears throat> I've asked this often over the last couple of years because I needed to know how to lead the church to respond to the pandemic. I asked God to help me solve problems, get direction from him, or get guidance for an important matter, an important decision. The Lord wants us to draw close to him in these times, in our confusion, and he strengthens us tremendously. We can trust the Lord when justice isn't happening right now. So the law is paralyzed. When it's paralyzed, we can trust God and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. God is way more patient than we are. He has a different timetable he is working from, but he always has perfect timing. 2 Peter 3.9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Notice this phrase in 2 Peter, but he is patient for, toward you. God is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. I, I am amazed by this statement. God is very gracious. He is patient and wanting to wait as long as possible to decide so that people can decide whether or not to get in to a relationship with him. They, they can choose to relate to him and come to know him through Jesus Christ. He is not slow. He's just patient. If, if he wiped the entire world out as he's, you know, uh, and started over, which I deserve, um, we wouldn't have this opportunity to come to know him and walk with him and find him and walk with him. And I am grateful for his patience because I would have been wiped out without his patience a long time ago. <laughs> That's for sure. We can trust God with what he is doing in and through history. God answers the prophet. He always answers his people when they ask him questions. Not a, in a questioning way, questioning God in, in the wrong way, but when you ask honest questions that relate to your confusion, you can trust that he will answer you. Here's the answer in Habakkuk 1.5. Look among the nations and see, wonder and be astounded, for I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if I told you. God is at work to accomplish his purpose in ways that you wouldn't believe if you were told, and I wouldn't believe if I were told. The right response is to trust the Lord to do what he's going to do and do what I'm led to do by God's Spirit because God is in control. He is doing a work that you wouldn't believe if you were told. We don't have the mental capacity to keep track of all that God is doing in the world. Uh, here's a clip from Bruce Almighty.
that illustrates the point in a humorous way that I'm not smart enough to track what God is doing. I think uh, Bruce uh, was God for a day or a week, which was beyond his capacity. And you see this in the clip here. Let's watch this together. We couldn't believe what God is doing if we were told because he guides worse world history toward his purpose in ways that we cannot fathom. We're smart, but we're not that smart. We're not as wise and intelligent as God himself. So this passage was a real strengthener for me during the pandemic, and even now, as I'm growing older, it's, it's strengthening to me because I don't have the capacity to understand all that God is doing, and I'm strengthened by what God, when I read of God's work in history through the centuries, we can trust God's sovereign, gracious hand to help us and to work out his good purpose in our lifetime. Sometimes God uses enemies, our enemies, to discipline his children. This is what he is doing with Israel. The prophet continues in Habakkuk 1.6, uh, For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation who mark through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own. They are dreaded and fearsome. Their justice and dignity go forth from themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards, more fierce than the evening wolves. Their horsemen press proudly on. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle, swift to devour. They all come for violence, all their faces forward. They gather captives like sand, and at kings they scoff, and at rulers they laugh. They laugh at every fortress, for they pile up earth and take it. Then they sweep by like the wind and go on, whose might is their own God. The Babylonians had captured Jerusalem. They were real barbarians, and their soul was puffed up. Righteousness was not in them. The Babylonians were barbarians, but not the kind you see in movies, not like Conan, but they were the real thing. They were savage and brutal. Their way of life was polar opposite of God's ideal for Israel. They conquered the nation of Israel and brought them out of their homeland and forced them to live in Babylon, which was very foreign to them and disgusting. To get a taste of what you this might be like, imagine being kidnapped by a Mexican cartel and taken to live in their city in Mexico. That would be brutal, for sure. Babylonians struck fear into the hearts of the entire world at the time. They were powerful, arrogant, and ruthless. Sometimes God uses even our enemies to discipline his people. Maybe you've experienced that. An enemy says or does, does something to you that tests you and you fail the test. You chafe under what they've done and God uses it to discipline you and correct you. And you come through on the other end better for it. We have a choice. We can wrestle 
with faith or without faith? Wrestling and faith. I'm going to keep compare those two, with faith or without faith. You arrive at peace when you wrestle in faith. Isaiah 26, 3 says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. If you stay focused on God, you will have peace. The promise here is perfect peace. It's a struggle to do this for sure. That's why you arrive at peace, because you don't start there for sure. If you wrestle without faith, you have anxiety. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. If, if we don't keep offering up things we worry about to God, we have no peace. We have anxiety instead. Peace is available to us if we keep talking to God about the things we're anxious about. When you wrestle in faith, you trust in the sovereignty of God to work things out for your good. Romans 8, 28 and 29 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. God uses even the hard things in our lives to conform us to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. He's the firstborn among many brothers. We're a part of his family, and he made us so. And so this is a tremendous uh, privilege to, to be in his family and to have him work out all things for good for us. When you wrestle without faith, you try to control the people and things that are beyond your control. The circle of concern includes all the things that we are concerned about, and which, which is a lot in this world. The circle of responsibility includes the things we can do something about, uh, and we aim to be faithful in these things, uh, that, the things that we've been entrusted with. You take responsibility to do what you can inside the circle of responsibility, which is a smaller circle, and you trust God and pray about the things that are in the circle of concern, the wider circle. So this, this is what we do. We take our questions to God and let him help us sort them out. We walk by faith, not by sight. Stay focused on God and what he is doing in your life. Keep offering up prayers and the things you are anxious about so you will not live with overwhelming anxiety. Trust in the sovereignty of God. He is sovereign. He's working for your good if you are a follower of Christ. He will use even the hard things for your good to build you up. Stop trying to control what you can't control. Do what you're responsible for and pray about all the things that concern you, which is a boatload. 
of things to concern us. He uses vulnerability to draw people to himself. There is a spiritual hunger in the world right now that didn't exist before the pandemic. The third great awakening came at the end of the Civil War, and it started in Chicago uh, after the great Chicago fire of 1871. What was happening in our country at the time motivated many to see their need for Christ. This is what God wants to do in our day. And I think it's, it's set up for us to reap a harvest of many people who are seeking God and wanting to come to know him because he's using the vulnerability of the pandemic to draw people to himself. We have nowhere else to turn but to God during times like this. What was happening in our country at the time, at the time of the Great Chicago Fire, was a motivation for many to see their need for Christ. It should be the same for us today. The turmoil that's going on in our country should lead us to seek God, especially those who know God and relate to him. We seek God and we work out our troubles before him. We ask him the questions that we have and we take them to him and help ask him to help us sort these out. I want to stop, as I always do, and give you some time to think through some next steps uh, to take after hearing this message. I hope God has spoken to you, and I have some suggestions for you, but you may have some other thoughts that have come to mind, some other next steps. Uh, first step is, for the first time, I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and will follow him as Lord. Maybe you've been searching. Maybe you've been, maybe the pandemic or some trouble that's in your life has drawn you to consider Christ. Maybe you have your questions answered about what it means to commit your life to Christ. Take this step right now. And then the second step, take your questions about life directly to the Lord. We have the privilege to do that in, uh, in this day and age. So we, we can take them. Jesus made a way for us to go directly before the throne of God with confidence. And we can do that. And then third step, Keep trusting God with the things that I am anxious about. That is tough. It's a struggle. It's a wrestling match. But we can get to the point where we trust God with the things we're worried about. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for your kindness and grace. Thank you, God, that you use even the hard things in our lives to do us good. And I pray that we, you, could, you would grow our faith to trust you more and more, that you would, we would take our questions directly to you and keep trusting you with the things we're anxious about. I pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.